Hello and welcome to this photo speed video. My name is Tim Jones and today what we're going to be looking at is matte papers. But before we do, as always, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel just by clicking on the subscribe button at the bottom there. And please also check out our other videos and please share any comments you have on these. We love to hear what you think of these videos and it gives us loads of ideas for new and upcoming videos. Okay, so let's start by having a look at my top tip, should we say, for printing on matte papers. So matte papers are fantastic. I, I personally, I really like them. And I think if you're looking for that fine art feel or that something different, I suppose, and that unique point to your prints, then matte papers are well worth looking at. However, they can be tricky and they can need a little bit of work and coaxing, should we say, to get the best out of them. So I'm gonna take you through some tips on things I found out while printing on matte papers and hopefully you can get some better prints. The main question I get asked with matte papers is, I have usually use say a luster or pearl type of paper, but I've started using matte papers and they come in out really flat why is this? I mean, and usually it's matte papers are rubbish. So what happens? Why are they coming out a bit flatter and a little bit kind of not as much punch, should we say? I always say to people, the best thing to do when printing on matte papers is try and manage your expectation a little bit. We're usually editing on a backlit screen that's going to make everything really vibrant and stand out, especially if you're on a Mac computer. So that can really affect the way you expect the image to look when it comes out of your printer. So if it's not as vibrant or as contrasty or kind of really punchy and jumping off the screen at you when it comes out of the printer, then you're going to be a little bit disappointed and you're going to think it looks really flat. However, the way to think about a matte print is it's a different beast, it's a different animal, should we say. It's coming out of that printer, and the best thing you can do is ignore your screen, take that print away and say to yourself, am I happy with it? Does it look right? Because the blacks won't be as, they'll be deep and they'll be rich, but they will be different, and they probably won't be as glossy and shiny as they are on your screen. The best thing to do is if you can, is edit say on a different screen if you have that option um, and you're fortunate to be able to. Like, a bit like the BenQ behind me here has a kind of a satiny type of screen to it. It's not fully matte but it does help and it does take down that glare and that, that glossiness of the screens. Matte computers are notorious because the screens are almost too good for printing so you end up with this really vibrant, high saturated print and you've edited to that for screen, which is absolutely fantastic. It's amazing, nothing wrong with that at all. But when it comes out of the printer and you're on a matte paper, and especially a cotton based paper as well, because they do tend to kind of suck the contrast and suck the colors a little bit and mute everything down a little bit, that we do need to add that back in. And that's where soft proofing and hard proofing can come in. So I've done a few examples here. Now I've chosen a black and white picture of this lion here and I've also chosen a picture of some flowers with really vibrant colours. Now I've printed a control image on our Photo Smooth Pearl just as a kind of everyday kind of semi-gloss type of paper. But then I've also chosen our High White Smooth paper and printed the same image on it. Now, as you can see with the lion picture here, you can see that it has lost a little bit of contrast on the high white smooth, the matte paper. And that's generally because for matte papers, the ink just sinks a little bit deeper into the paper. So what we need to do is we just need to pop that back in. Now we can do this in Lightroom. 
under our print adjustments, or we can just create a virtual copy and just go through and pop that in there as well. You can also do this by using soft proofing. And if you haven't seen my video on soft proofing, please check it out. I will put a link in the um, description below so you can have a look at that and take you through what soft proofing can do. But the idea of soft proofing is when you click that box say in Lightroom or Photoshop or Capture One, it will try and emulate how that print is going to come out of the printer for you. So it's a really useful tool. It doesn't get quite there, as I'll explain in my video on it. Um, I am going to revisit it soon as well, so I'm going to be doing a new video on that as well. So um, I will hopefully update the description below as soon as I get that video done and pop it in. But I'm not a huge fan of it. I prefer personally to print the picture and do what's called hard proofing. But going back to these prints, the line you'll see, the black just has a little bit fallen off as well. It's a different quality. The black is still really deep and rich. However, it has just lost a little bit of its kind of sheen, should I say. The pearl is going to be a closer match to the screen, I would say. But the matte paper is still close, but it has taken on a different quality. And I think that's the way to think about matte papers as well. It's going to be a different quality to your picture. Obviously, the higher the white point of the matte paper, the easier this gets. Like our NST Bright White and our High White Smooth here are quite a high white point. So that will help you achieve a bit of, bit of a closer match between the two as well. The warmer the paper, the more you'll start to see that contrast fall off a little bit as well. So let's look at the colour images. Now these, on first glance, when they both came off the printer, I really did think that these kind of looked very, very similar. And there was only slight differences in here. Now the part of the image I found the most difference in was the reds and the purple here. So with the purple flower, there is a difference. The pearl paper is a little bit punchier. It has a little bit more impact, should I say. It has a more vibrant colour to it. Also the reds as well down the bottom are just a little bit um, subdued on the matte papers. So this is where this fall off will happen. Now, it's not unpleasant, should I say, and it's not kind of wrong. It's just a different look to that picture. and. To be honest, the pearl is going to be a closer match to your screen, but the matte paper is something else. It gives a different quality. So both are correct, and it's just what you want your picture to look like and how you feel that picture. So I keep saying about proofing the image and how we go about this and what, what we need to do just to kind of manage our expectation of how a matte print is going to come out of the printer. Now to proof an image it is absolutely vital we use a profile, be that a generic profile or a custom profile. The best results are going to be if you use a custom profile. So it's going to emulate how your printer is going to produce those results for you. So this is really important we have that profile made for us or we use a generic profile off our website say. Now soft proofing I have a slight issue with because you're still looking at it through that screen. Just going to kind of still apply a little bit of punch to it so it's not going to be a complete match. I always say with soft proofing it gets you about sorry, 40 50% of the way there then we have to actually print it to have a look at it how it's going to look. Now I've always found the best way to actually proof an image is to print it. But of course this can get expensive. So if you've ever watched my hard proofing video, I'll put a link to it in the description below. So in my hard proofing technique, what I would do is I would print little pictures like this one here. So I gradually just work my way through different looks, different kind of contrasts and exposures. Now you can print all these in one go so you can do kind of one sheet with different adjustments in there or the way I prefer to do it is just to print one 
and then think, okay, I want a little bit more contrast in there, so then print the next one, and so on. And just make those adjustments. In Lightroom, this is dead easy because you can just create virtual copies. So the idea is when we finish this, we can just go through and we can say, actually, number five is perfect. So I'm gonna print number five. And like I said, in Lightroom, it's dead easy. You just count along five and print that virtual copy. And then we should get a better result really good to do on black and white and on colour, especially colour because we can just get those colours looking a little bit more vibrant as we need. So in answer to my first question, why do matte prints look rubbish? They don't. What they are is just something different and it might not be for everyone. So if you're printing on matte papers and struggling really to get the desired results you want for your pictures, then perhaps matte papers aren't for you and you should more look at the fine art glossy range we produce, like the brighter papers and the uh, platinum gloss art fibers and the legacy. Because matte papers aren't for everyone. Like I said, it is quite fashionable at the minute to print on matte papers and it seems to be the thing to do at the minute but if that isn't right for your photographs then it's not right so don't be afraid to give give matte papers a try perhaps in one of our test packs but then if they're not for you don't worry still print on your your chosen paper you tried it it's fine big advantage of matte papers is if um, you're in a gallery situation or something and you haven't got the prints behind glass or they're just in mounts then there's no reflection off the prints. That's a good kind of uh, plus side to printing on mats, but also you've got the textures and matte papers and things. And they really suit some subjects really well, but other subjects they don't so much. So it's just a case of experimenting and seeing which fits your photography. And also my big saying is make sure you're happy. If you're happy with your prints, then that's all that matters. If you're happy, that's how they, you want them to be displayed and how you want them to look. That's the main thing. Everything else is kind of secondary after that. And you can fight your corner a little bit then. If you're happy with it, then you know why you're happy with it. So I hope that's been useful, uh, but kind of what we kind of have to think about when we're printing on matte papers. And like I said, don't be afraid to step away from matte papers if you're not getting those desired results that you think you should be and please if you have any problems or any questions I'm more than happy to look at any prints post them into me and I can have a look and see what I think to see if there's anything else going on that could be affecting your prints on matte papers as always please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and please put any comments below like I said at the start I really love reading your comments and kind of knowing I'm on the right track with all these videos so until next time bye bye